Okay, this video is sort of a chain rule for beginners type of thing. There's a link to the problems that I do in the description below, um, and let's get started. So first thing we need to know is what the chain rule says. So the chain rule is all about finding the derivative of a composition. So derivative with respect to x or d dx of f of g of x. So to find the derivative of that, what you're gonna do is f prime of g of x, and then times g prime of x. That's all there is to it. Um, there's another video where I kind of prove that, um, but the proof isn't gonna help you actually use the chain rule, it's just gonna show you that it's true. Um, so it's f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So the main time you're gonna use this, you're gonna use it anytime you see a composition of functions, so you have to get used to identifying a composition of functions. And then the thing to really keep in mind is that you actually use it on every composition. So things can be more complicated than just like one composition. So for example, you could try to find the derivative of f of g of h of x. So f of g of h of x is two different compositions. So to find the derivative of that, it's going to be f prime of g of h of x, and then times the derivative of the inner thing. The inner thing is g of h of x. So the derivative of g of something is g prime of h of x, and then the chain rule tells me I need to keep going, so times h prime of x. So we can use it over and over again, um, which is something to keep in mind, and it's gonna come up in some of the examples. So it'll keep going as long as you keep having compositions. So let's uh, take a look at some examples. So first, we need to know what functions we're gonna be dealing with. So I just picked three functions. Um, f of x is x cubed, g of x is tan of x, and then h of x is gonna be e to the x. So to be able to use the chain rule, I need to know the derivative of each of these. And I assume you know them, um, but the derivative of f is going to be 3x squared, that's just power rule. Um, g prime is going to be secant squared of x, which you should definitely memorize, the derivative tangent is secant squared. And then the derivative of h of x is kind of the weirdest one. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so um, it's gonna give us kind of the weirdest examples when we do this, uh, but it comes up a lot, so I thought it was good to throw it in here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just compose these in various ways. So the first problem that we're gonna do, we're gonna find the derivative of f of g of x. So what that means in terms of the functions, because this is how you'll more likely see it, we're really finding the derivative of tangent cubed of x, or tangent of x cubed, however you wanna say that. I find with trig functions initially, um, especially when you're just learning, it's easier to rewrite the exponents. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the derivative of the quantity tan of x and then cubed. So you can see we have this big outer function is something cubed, the inner function is tangent, um, so we can use the chain rule on that. So to use the chain rule, um, I'm gonna say the derivative of something cubed is three times that thing squared, and then times the derivative of that thing. So that thing is tangent of x, and the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x. And that's it, that's the derivative. So if you think about it, there are two functions being composed, there's f and g. So two functions means you're just gonna take two derivatives as you're using the chain rule. So sometimes people over chain rule, I'm not even gonna explain what that means because if you're not doing it, you won't do it. Um, but if there's two functions being composed, you have to take two derivatives. Uh, let's take a look at another example. So for this one, we're gonna take the derivative of g of h of x. So we know we can use the chain rule on that, it's gonna be g prime of h of x times h prime of x, but I'm gonna rewrite it so it looks more kind of normal. So we're really finding the derivative of the tangent of e to the x. Okay, so the derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of that thing times, by the chain rule, the derivative of that thing. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, because it's a weird one, um, and again, we had two functions, we took two derivatives. That's the derivative of g of h of x. It's kind of ugly, but um, you just kind of get used to that as you do a lot of these. Uh, let's take a look at another one. Derivative of h of f of x. So again, let's rewrite it. So the derivative of e to the x cubed. Okay, so the derivative of e to the something is just e to that thing times, by the chain rule, the derivative of that thing. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, but I don't think you would leave it this way, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna rewrite this. 
So 3x squared e to the x cubed. All right, that's the derivative. Let's take a look at another one. How about, so this is our first like triple composition or whatever you want to call it. So h of g of f of x. So let's first write down what that would be. So that's going to be um, the derivative of e to the tangent of x cubed. Okay, so we got that. So let's think about it. Uh, the derivative of e to the something is actually just e to the something. But then by the chain rule, it's times the derivative of that thing. So that thing is tangent of something. The derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of that thing. And then by the chain rule, times the derivative of that thing. That thing in this case is x cubed, so the derivative of that is 3x squared. And I'm going to rewrite this because it's kind of weird the way it's written. So I have 3x squared secant squared of x cubed e to the tangent of x cubed. If you think about it, we have a composition of three functions. And in the process of finding the derivative, we took three derivatives. We found the derivative e to the something, the derivative of tangent of something, and then the derivative of x cubed. So when you count up how many compositions you have, that's how many times you'll actually take derivatives. And then you end up with a product as you go through. But it's something to keep in mind, especially when you're first starting out with these. All right, we want the derivative of f of h of x. So let's write it out. So that's the derivative of the quantity e to the x cubed. You might be thinking, let's do some algebra on that. I'm going to do that in the next problem. But first, I'm just going to take the derivative. OK, so it's something cubed. The derivative of something cubed is 3 times that thing to the second power. And then times, by the chain rule, the derivative of that thing. So that thing is e to the x. So I'm going to multiply by the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. I'm going to do a little bit of algebra on this. So this is 3. Uh, we have a power to a power, so you multiply the exponent. So e to the 2x, and then times e to the x. And then uh, same base and multiplying, so we add the exponents. So we get 3e to the 3x. OK. Now let's do the problem again, but do that algebraic simplification first. So same problem, which means same thing here. But this time, instead of taking the derivative and using the chain rule right away, I'm going to make this d dx of e to the 3x. OK, so I can use the chain rule on this because it's a composition. It's e to the x and then 3x are my two functions. So the derivative of e to the something is e to that thing. By the chain rule, I need to multiply by the derivative of that thing. The derivative of 3x is just 3. So I end up with 3e to the 3x, which is exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which way we did the problem, we get the same result, which is important to realize. So simplify at the beginning is probably a better idea, but it won't make a difference. OK, let's uh, keep going. So uh, this, they're just kind of getting silly at this point, but you know you get better at them by doing more of them. So let's do the derivative of h of h of h of x. So that is the derivative of e to the 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 x. So it's hard to say. All right, let's see if we can do this. So the derivative of e to the something is just e to that thing. So that's the original function that we're dealing with times the derivative of that thing. So that thing is e to the e to the x. The derivative of e to the e to the x is the same as the derivative of e to the something. So it's going to be e to the e to the x times the derivative of that thing. That thing is e to the x, and its derivative is e to the x. So that's actually what we get. We get e to the e to the e to the x times e to the e to the x times e to the x. And then you could simplify that, but I didn't really think it would help. So I just kind of left it at that. Um, that one's harder to say than it is to do. So let's move on to another example, which is equally ridiculous. h of h of h of x. So I'm going to write it out. So it's the derivative of tangent of tangent of tangent of x. All right. So the derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of that thing. So it's secant squared of tan of tan of x times the derivative of that inner function. So times the derivative of tan of tan of x. The derivative of tan of something is secant squared of that thing. So we get secant squared of tan of x. 
times the derivative of that thing. That thing is tan of x, the derivative of tan of x is secant squared, so times secant squared. Okay, so these are just weird examples, but I mean, once you really know what you're doing and you can do these, uh, you're well on your way, and then it's just about not forgetting to use the chain rule um, once you have the mechanics down. So let's look at, I'm gonna do two more. It's really the same problem, I'll do it two different ways. Um, so what we have is the derivative of f of f of f of x. We're gonna do it a weird way the first time. So first, I had a lot of trouble writing this. So it's the derivative of the quantity, the quantity x cubed cubed cubed. Um, I'm pretty sure that's right. That was really hard to write the first time I had to write it. Um, okay, so overall we have this big outer function of cubed. So the derivative of something cubed is, by the chain rule, well, actually just by the power rule, three times that thing squared times the derivative of that thing. Okay, so now we're dealing with uh, the quantity x cubed cubed. So we need the derivative of the quantity x cubed cubed. That's gonna be three times the quantity x cubed and then squared times the derivative of the inner function, which in this case is just x cubed. The derivative of that is just three x squared. And now we have a kind of annoying algebra problem on our hands. So I have three times three times three. So I'm just gonna multiply those. So I have 27 x cubed cubed is x to the ninth squared is x to the 18th. So x to the 18th and then uh, x cubed squared is x to the six, so times x to the six, and then x squared. And if I add all of those up, I get 27x to the 26, which kind of looks suspicious if you're familiar with the power rule, which hopefully you are if you're doing the chain rule. Um, so let's do this problem again, and instead of uh, kind of driving ourselves insane by chain ruling all the way through, let's simplify on the first step. So same problem, except here I'm gonna simplify I really wanna find the derivative of, so x cubed cubed is x to the ninth, cubed is x to the 27th. So I'm really just finding the derivative of x to the 27th, which uh, as expected is 27 times x to the 26th. All right, so that's 10, I think, pretty good examples of the chain rule. If you followed along, I think you would have found this helpful. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.